off that, that's being poured into it. So I agree totally, and, and so do many, many of the, the listeners that we have here now, that on some level there is some divine intervention going on. and. Absolutely. Um, and the key here is no fear. We, you know, we're dealing with some monstrous issues, but no fear because when we're in that state of fear, we we can't uh, we can't do anything rational. And and certainly, you know, when you're in a state of fear, you can jump up and down and make other people fearful. But uh, you know, you've got to have a clear head and be in the heart zone at all times. And and whatever way you do that. Um, Prayer, meditation, however you do that, just just some quiet time is most most important. Doctor, can I just jump in here for a, for a tick? There's there's a, um, a an herb that I would like to put out there, it's something called chickweed. Now chickweed is freely available, and I'd really love it if people would look into this. Uh, our friend Yado from Australia, whether or not, is adamant that the, this is one of the products that can help us through now, along with coriander, cilantro, etc. This will help get these metals out of our bodies. So th there's another one to throw into the mix for, for you all to look at. That's an old medicine, chickweed. Mm, mm. And Good very, one. very available. And along with comfrey, I mean, I think comfrey is the most magnificent Plant. I, I, I've been lucky enough to get hold of some, and I'm now growing it in the garden, and I'm breaking it up for other people to have in their garden. You know, I, I watch the animals eat it when they're sick. Um, uh -huh. You know, um, yeah. Well, they've uh, done a good job in this country of making it pretty much demonized, but it's a fabulous, right. wonderful. Yes, and it's part of that um, herbal blend I was talking about uh, in smoking. Uh, and if you can find these things in bulk, uh, and I'll, let me restate them, spearmint, comfrey, mullen. Now, this one might be hard for people other than in the United States. Uh, Herba Santa, that's typically southwestern, but that's okay if you can't find, just find as many as you can. Sage, colt's foot, that's another American. But it doesn't matter, find as many as you can. And I have an old coffee grinder that I've dedicated to my herbs now and I grind it up and you can either roll it or put it in a pipe and I have something called a vaporizer it's a little more high high end uh, and periodically partake of these into your lungs because they uh, according to Dr. Michael Castle and I believe him they interrupt the absorption of many of these materials they also allow you to help cough whatever's accumulated there up and out. And I know smoking uh, sounds counterintuitive to most people because we've been perfectly brainwashed on that one. But may I assure you that smoking herbs is a very old, old medicine for lung health. You have to remember your lungs sit suspended, you know, behind your ribs. They're, it's not like your bladder or your kidneys or your whatever, that, that, uh, your liver, that you can flush. They just sit there suspended. So you have to sort of go after them, or not go after them, but address them um, individually by taking something in directly into them. Now, in the old, old, old days, our grandmoms might have turned on the shower uh, real hot and put us in a bathroom with steam. That's another wonderful way uh, to treat our lungs is steaming them. And one of the herbs is from Down Under, that my, my favorite. In fact, it was the first herb that Chief Two Trees taught me in terms of steaming the lungs, and that's tea tree oil. And tea tree oil, I personally find about two drops, maybe three if you're bold, in a mug that you dedicate just to that because it'll get it. It's so strong it gets in the ceramic you can't get it out a couple of three, two, three drops, and then rapidly boiling, rapidly boiling distilled water. I put it by the kitchen sink because it is an expectorant, which we need, and pour that rapidly boiling water over those tea tree drops all the way to the top. Cup your hands around the mug. This is what I do anyway. I'm instructing. I'm not prescribing. And then sniff. So you're treating your sinuses and your throat. 
sniff, 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 and then open your mouth wide and deep inhale that steam until all the steam is gone. Then we pour that mixture down the sink. We never ingest it. It's toxic <laughs> to ingest. All essential oils are, all that's become a favorite mm -hmm. uh, therapy. We don't really advise uh, ingesting essential oils. So we're steaming, 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 steaming our lungs with tea tree oil, which is a full spectrum antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, antiparasite herb. And and Another on that, if you wonder. can't if you if you can't tolerate the tea tree, tea tree is wonderful. And, and in fact, I burn uh, tea tree on my fire. Uh, I burn uh -huh. the wood, and um, it makes a, you know a remarkable difference in our home. It smells beautiful too. But okay, so if you can't tolerate the tea tree, I understand that peppermint oil is just as good. And perhaps what what about eucalyptus? All all the above. Peppermint oil is wonderful. Eucalyptus is great. Um, there's a combination out there called Thieves Oil. It's a little expensive, but it's also good. It has clove and cinnamon and all kinds of wonderful things. Uh, the whole idea, if, if you can't tolerate any of that, use the salt, Himalayan pink salt, and inhale the salt steam. That would be good, too. What we're trying to do is directly dose the lung with, with medicinal. And so find what it, it, what works for you. Dr. Scott, I had a question about our pets. We all have pets, and um, I know that they're probably subjected to this stuff just as much as we are. And what can we do to help them? Well, that's, they are, in fact. Um, and I just had a very disturbing conversation with my Canadian scientist. Again, I don't use this name. He doesn't want me to. Um, <clears throat> about why there's so many kitties dying uh, and, and having renal failure uh, because they're licking, as they do, their fur, which is now, as we are, uh, kind of fully involved, particularly with the polymer, which is toxic, and they're ingesting that, and it's causing renal failure, uh, kidneys shutting down, all kinds of things. So if you have a kitty, and they, uh, he, I do, and he or she is amenable to it, uh, I use the Miracle 2 neutralizer. I spray it on the brush, which is a, a boar's head hair brush. He doesn't like anything but that, the natural. And I brush him as often as I can so that he's not ingesting all of that hair mm -hmm. into his system. The neutralizer, the Miracle 2 neutralizer, can be added to the water. The, the diatomaceous earth can be added to the food, and that's very helpful. Can you do that with dog, uh, dogs as well? I know that the big change in my my cats and and the wild birds outside when I started using neutralizer, and I delivered it to my old cat with I got my hands wet with hot water and I sprayed neutralizer on my on my wet hand, and then I petted her and rubbed her fur and kind of pulled on it down where she can lick and then she was damp so she started licking it I happened to be standing outside the next day when she went to the bathroom and she had to run terribly um, I think I overdosed her but she was feeling better and so I sprayed it in her ears and almost instantly part of her hearing came back in her left ear and the birds are unbelievable they're doing so well now they look terrible before and, and they're doing so much better. I really think the neutralizer is the key for animals. Yeah, and the thing about that stuff is, now I keep mine refrigerated. They won't tell you to do that, but I do. I think it just keeps it, you know, fresher, um, is that it has no taste. It's like water. So, you know, anybody who has their babies, their animals, <laughs> knows that they're, they can be very, um, particularly kitties, resistant to anything with taste or smell or whatever. And that's what's so wonderful about the neutralizer is that it's odorless, tasteless. It's just like water. So they, they take it readily. And you can put it in their water, and, and they'll drink it. And, you, and my kitty, as I said, I spray it on my brush. I put it in his water. Um, we're doing, you know, kind of the best we can in these times. But with that said, when he sits in the window uh, and the sunlight hits him, he looks like a fiber optic lamp. 
Yes, I, I've seen this with I've seen this with my cat. Um, fiber optic lamp. I mean, he looked at me the other night, and his eyes were absolutely lime green. Mm -hmm. Now, um, on on that issue, but you know, with the animals, I my, I've got a small dog. I've got a couple of small dogs, and every time, like last night, it was snowing here. I mean, we're at sea level here, so. <laughs> I let the dogs out last night and, and, you know, there was snow out there. The dog came out, went outside, came back in and instantly started with an asthma attack. She got up this morning and the same thing happened. So I found that, um, when, you know, when their little lungs are, are not coping like this, I've, I've used peppermint oil and that, that seems to settle her down very quickly. And I've started putting a little uh, colloidal silver in their drinking water. Not all the time. But, um, you know, my other wee dog had a wee cough, and this seemed to take care of it very, very quickly. So there are lots of things that we can do for our extended family. And, and Rose, may I make a suggestion? Because animals, um, we call them animals, how silly, are fellow beings of different sizes and shapes and forms, <laughs> uh, have a wisdom about them that we have lost. And so what I do for my kitty, uh, I do put colloidal down, colloidal silver down, but I put it in a different dish, and I put it next to his water, and so he gets to choose. Rather than me dose him from my ignorance, I put the colloidal down and let him choose on what day he wants to have how much of that. Will he drink the Excellent colloidal? Excellent advice. I don't think my cats would drink the colloidal silver. You don't well, mine, it. mine. It's 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 interesting because I have my cat has a bowl and my dog has a bowl, and I've been putting the colloidal in the dog's bowl, and the cat's just started drinking out of the dog's bowl, which I've never seen before. So, you you're mm -hmm. dead right. And I mean, the first time I saw my animals eating the comfrey, that's when I knew, you know. I mean, we know that anyway. They 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 can go out and find what they need to heal themselves. Uh, well, that's how naturopathic medicine really got a lot of its foundation. The original naturopath back in this country anyway in the 1800s, but I'm sure in the rest of the world, thousands of years, watched the animal. What did they eat when they had a problem? What did they go to? They have just a much higher, they're still much more connected uh, than we are. And I think that's really the fate of mankind was his um, disconnect from that which was precious. The air that he breathed, the food that he ate, he was not a very good guardian of that which, uh, or has not been, 